Good morning everyone, Gadget here again and in this video we're going to talk about this beast right here, the Canon 1DX Mark III. It is a deep dive, let's get this thing started. Welcome back everyone and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when a new video comes out. Now let's talk about this, the Canon 1DX Mark III. I was lucky enough to get a first look of this camera when it was announced officially and it really impressed me. So much so that I want to shoot a deep dive with this camera, take it to a place, shoot it in a sports related environment and really try to push it to its limit. For this video, I decided to partner with my friends at Box Up Performance and they were gonna facilitate a shooting environment for us where we can really push this camera. And that's not all, I want to bring some friends along for this trip. Canon 1DX Mark III is designed for professionals and for this video I thought it'd be fitting to bring in a couple of professionals to test drive this thing and let me know what they think. We have Ara, a fashion photographer based out of Toronto, and she's gonna take this and see what she can create with this new beast. I'm also bringing in Nadoon of Blink. He's a local videographer putting out some amazing work, and he shoots Canon. He has two 1DX Mark IIs, and he puts them through their paces. We're gonna see what he can do with this one, and fun fact, he just pre-ordered the camera, so let's see if it lives up to his expectations. If you want to get a rundown of all the specs of this camera, go to henrys.com. You'll see the link in the description and you can see all the specs for yourself. Really, the standout thing is that brand new sensor from Canon, a 20 megapixel sensor that's designed for this camera, an all new Digic X processor, and the ability to shoot up to 5.5K raw footage internally. And while these were the key components that I wanted to test drive, there was still a lot that the 1DX Mark III brings, such as 16 frames per second mechanical shutter or 20 frames per second in live view, such as the ability to shoot C-Log with this iteration as well, and the brand new head detection. Is that really living up to the hype? Well, I found out for myself. Moving over to CF Express cars, maybe a drastic departure from what Canon is used to, but I gotta say, this pays off really quickly. The ability to capture footage at a near unlimited clip is something that people are going to value when you're in that sports environment or especially in that news documentary environment where you need to get the shot. You cannot have your camera hiccup, buffer, or fail on you. We're here with our uh, fashion photographer hey. based out of Toronto. So you're a Canon shooter. You shoot on a 5D Mark IV, a couple of them, and lenses. You got to test this out before most people in the world. What stands out to you? Well, what I love is the focus mm -hmm. of the camera. Um, we were shooting an athlete, and um, Ashley was doing jumps and kicks and all that other stuff. And it was, it was great that I could capture every single second, because usually you'd have to do like a hundred shots to find that perfect one. It was yeah. nice that you could wait for the moment and feel really good that you knew you got it. You got, I mean, this is a different body size compared to your 5D Mark IV. Did yes. you like it? Did you not enjoy it? It's a little bit heavier, but I actually really do like it. It feels like you can hold it in your hands. Some of the newer ones where they're kind of small, I feel like I'm using those point and shoot cameras. So this, right. this, feels, this feels good, especially if I'm moving around, I kind of have an awareness of where my camera is. It's kind of in your head, but it's, nice. it's awesome. Nice. What's, and I, I mean, one thing is you got to use all your lenses. I guess that's a big benefit yes. for you. Yes, yes. I am a Canon shooter. I've been a Canon shooter forever. Um, so everything I own and all my lenses are Canon. So it was great because nice. I know exactly what I like about them when I want specific, you know, visuals or distortion or crispness, so. The image quality that comes out of the sensor is phenomenal. And while it is only 20 megapixels, for most people that are gonna be using this camera, it's more than enough. The end result is going to the web, going to print, but not really looked at to be blown up and enlarged in a drastic way. More importantly, performance is what matters most. You need to be able to capture that moment. And when I had that Taekwondo athlete jumping into frame, being able to rely on this camera to capture the moment, get the autofocus accurate, and not stop shooting, that's something that really, really proved its worth. There's a constant trend toward the minimization of cameras, and if I had to pick between the two, I do like that. But that being said, it doesn't mean there's no reason for a camera of this size not to exist. Moving between portrait and landscape shooting on this camera is really easy because it has that integrated grip. It's extremely comfortable while you're shooting with it, albeit the longer you start shooting, you will get a bit tired because, well, it is a heavy camera. 
However, this weight isn't entirely a bad thing. When I was watching Nadoon capture video with this, and one of the things he said is that this weight actually allows the center of gravity to be a little bit lower and provide a bit more stabilization. And while the camera itself doesn't have in-body stabilization, the weight of it prevents it from being reactive to the shakes and jitters of your hand. One thing we had to test out was the brand new head detection in conjunction with the burst shooting. So I asked our friend Ara to grab a burst of our athlete jumping and performing a few moves. And wow, this thing, well, in the environment that we had it in, did not lose focus. As she was jumping around, it would go between eye, face, and head detection to ensure that the subject was indeed in focus. And while this is anecdotal, I'm not gonna say it's gonna have a 100% hit rate, it is still extremely high. And head detection, it just seems like such an obvious thing to consider. So you have these three layers of autofocus that are working in tandem to make sure that your subject is in focus. It's something that I'm surprised that no one thought of sooner. As I was shooting and capturing with this camera, something that dawned on me really quickly was how durable this camera is. It just feels like it's designed to take a beating and shoot in any kind of condition you see fit. And looking at the cameras that Nadoon was using for his video, I asked to take a look at his 1DX Mark II and they were banged up, dented, scraped, but one thing they didn't do was fail on him. And while it might not be for everyone, there's still a subset of people that want something that's weighty and durable that can withstand a lot more. Another thing that's bringing a lot of attention to the 1DX Mark III is the video features. You have a ton of video features, and unlike previous iterations of cameras, it doesn't seem like Canon has sacrificed one mode for another or gives you a significant drawback. You can shoot 1080p with the full sensor, 4K with the full sensor. There aren't too many of these annoying crops that are imposed on you. The one thing that is a bit of a drawback is that their autofocus, their dual pixel autofocus that they're known for is not available when you're shooting in those 5.5K modes. There's some other smaller restrictions there as well. But overall, it is a pretty good suite of video features. I got Nadoon here who's a professional videographer. You shoot a ton of content every week. You're shooting gigs and gigs of content. So you got to handle the 1DX Mark III. Yeah. You shoot on two 1DX Mark IIs for your work. Yeah. And rumor has it you pre-ordered the 1DX Mark III as well. I did so now that you got to use it, do you regret your pre-order or are you more excited? I'm super excited, probably more excited than I was. Uh, just playing around with it, the features I'm excited for are the, the C-Log, because mm -hmm. the 1DX Mark II didn't have that and that's something I've always wanted in the camera. Right. Um, we got the updated autofocus button right. with the um, smart controller. So right. Kind of just quickly skip through the autofocus points. And then the 5.5K RAW, which gives me the flexibility to like punch into shots if I need to, um, which is super exciting because sometimes I have like a perfect shot and there'll be like something in the corner where I just got to get rid of it and then right. punching in 1080, which loses quality. So nice. super excited about that. Nice. Thank you for your time. And with that said, let's check out the highlight reel. You made a highlight reel for this video, right? Yeah. Let's check out his highlight reel. Now, if I'm being honest, there isn't gonna be droves of people looking at the 1DX Mark III as solely a video production tool. That being said, looking at Nadoon and his workflow and using 1DX Mark IIs, it's a very capable system. Whether you wanna invest everything into this, we'll come back to your workflow that you have established, your lens lineup, and really what environments you find yourself in. Now, with all that great video stuff out of the way, I will still argue the Canon 1DX Mark III is a photography tool. It is a photographer's 
tool. And while there is still a ton that it can do and provide on video side, the people that are gonna get the most value out of this, it is going to be that photographer in demanding environments that's gonna get the most out of this camera. Maybe you're a destination wedding photographer, maybe you're in journalism, or maybe you find yourself at the sidelines of a sports event more often than not. This is a camera that's gonna be able to pay the bills and keep you shooting. I wasn't immediately sold on the 20 megapixel sensor, but that balance between quality, workflow, ISO performance, and overall camera performance, it's hard to argue with Canon on this. The fine folks at Canon were adamant to tell me that this was a pre-production model, pre-production model. Be sure to let everyone know it's a pre-production model, but running firmware 1.0 and using it the way I was using it, it just didn't fail on me. I asked our Taekwondo champion, please go as fast as you can, try to beat the camera, and it just kept up every step of the way. There are some people that will just prefer a mirrorless solution, the ergonomics of that, the silent shooting capabilities, the electronic viewfinder, or the pop-out display, but there is still a sizable amount of people that are invested in DSLR for the work that they do. A sizable amount of professionals that demand the absolute best. A sizable amount of people that find themselves in environments that are just not kind to cameras. And for those people, the Canon 1DX Mark III makes a compelling argument. While my type of shooting isn't necessarily gonna push this camera to its limits, it was nice to be reminded how nice the Canon colors are. And well, hey, it's gonna come down to preference. There's some of you that swear by it, and there's some of you that absolutely detest it. Personally, I really do enjoy the starting point that Canon gives us with respect to their color science. For me personally using this camera, while I don't see myself going back to DSLRs, I'm probably not the target audience. However, that being said, when I was using the 1DX Mark III, what really impressed me was having an optical viewfinder again and witnessing zero lag between me and the subject. That's just something that's really valuable if you're shooting in that type of environment. The great fantastic battery life here. There's just no argument here. You're getting way better battery life on a solution like this than on a mirrorless solution and that high degree of reliability. So there you have it, our deep dive of the Canon 1DX Mark III and a special shout out to Nadoon, Ara, Ashley and the kind folks at Box Out Performance for helping me put this together. Most importantly, let me know what you think about this camera. Does it make a compelling argument for what you do or is there a better option out there? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. We have a ton of great stuff on the way. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. All right, so I really want to test out this 1000 plus image buffer. So I have the camera set to capture RAW plus JPEG and to fire even if a lens is not on. We have a CF Express card in here, 256 gigs. Hopefully it doesn't run out. And I'm going to try and finish this sandwich before this buffer quits on me. Okay, so. I think you got the point.